Howdy and welcome to the second part of these screencasts dealing with real-time events. In this episode, we'll implement much of the client-side portion of our code. As I said at the end of the last episode, you can implement your front end however you'd like. I'm just learning the front end, so I wanted to start with server-side views and then refactor what I've done to include a framework like Backbone to transition into a single-page application. That, however, is for another day, and here we'll manipulate the DOM within our server-side views. So let's go back to the app.js file located in the assets linker JS directory and our event listener for the event message. As you may recall, within this file, we've established a connection with the socket server, subscribed to our user models classroom and instance room via socket.get, and we're now awaiting a message via socket on message. In addition to logging this message, I want to make changes to the DOM depending upon the contents of the message. To make the code cleaner, I'm going to define the callback function outside this event listener. Once again, I'm not the most imaginative person when it comes to function names. And as proof of this, I'm going to name this callback comment message received from server. This will be the method that will route our messages depending upon the model that is being updated. And we'll define it down here at the bottom of the app.js file. I'm still going to log the message for debug purposes, but now I'm going to check if the message is coming from the user model. And if it is, I'm going to call a new custom method called update user and DOM. And I'm going to pass it the user ID and the message as arguments. The update user and DOM method is going to determine which page will ultimately receive the changes and route it to the appropriate method for that page. So in this case, the receiving page is slash user, or our user administration page. And since the action or verb is update, we're going to route the message to the update user method of an object I'm calling index page. And that's because it is the index page of our user controller. Remember, these are all custom methods that I'm creating and have nothing to do with sales. The update user method is where we'll update the DOM to display the icon online PNG or the icon offline PNG, depending upon the value of the logged in attribute. If you take a look at the index.ejs file under the views slash user directory, I'm populating each row of the DOM with two custom data attributes, data ID and data model. These are then used as jQuery criteria for identifying DOM elements. So we'll find the row of the user ID that we want to change and then replace the image source with the correct icon. OK, let's see if this works. So I've reloaded the server. And as you can see, the login status icon changes immediately when another user logs in or out. What about when a new user is created? We want to update the user administration page with the new user or deleted user and their login status. To do this, we'll use the publish create and publish destroy methods. So let's head over to the create action of the user controller and insert the publish create method, passing the created user as an argument. Then we'll look at the destroy action and insert our publish destroy method, passing the ID of the user that was destroyed. That's it for the server side. So we'll go back to the client and our app.js file. We'll start with that method that really slides off your tongue, comment message received from server. From there, we'll proceed to the update user and DOM method, where the receiving page will again be slash user or the user administration page. But here, we'll add two cases to our switch statement, one for the create action and one for the destroy action. For the create action, we'll use the add user method. To clean things up and to show some functionality, I'm going to use a template using the underscore library. So let's take a look at the template, which I've stored in the linker assets templates directory. The template represents one row of the user administration page. Before using this template, there were a few things I needed to set up. The first was to add the underscore library to linker slash assets slash JS. Next, I made a slight change to the grunt file, changing the default template files to inject from HTML to EJS. Finally, because we are using a hidden form for the delete button action, we need to have access to the CSRF token. Since the template is added after the index.ejs page has been rendered on the server, we needed a way to get at that token. There are several different ways this can be done, including making an AJAX call to the server via a CSRF token route. However, I decided to make a change to the layout.ejs file, appending the CSRF token to my own namespaced attribute on the global windowed object. 
That way, when the layout.ejs file is rendered, the CSRF token within my object will be appended to the page. So back in the client-side app.js file, I built up an object called obj with the user plus the CSRF token, which I can never pronounce, and that is the token we obtained uh, from the layout.ejs file. Here, I'm using jQuery to grab the last TR on the page and apply the template after that last TR tag, passing in the necessary data for the template in our obj object. But what about when a user is deleted? That's a lot easier. We'll add the destroy user method and use jQuery to find the appropriate user and remove that row from the DOM. Okay, that is a lot of stuff. Let's see if all this worked. Okay, I'll restart the server and log myself in to the first browser and create a user in the second browser. Great, the user was added to the DOM with the correct login status. Now I'll log out and log in as another user, and this time I'll delete the user we just created. Once again, both sides updated like we wanted. Okay, there's one more thing to add. Each time the server comes up, we want to make sure that the online attribute of each user is set to false. For that, we can use the sales bootstrap config file. Because I used an empty object in our update method as the first argument, all the users will be updated. The second argument is the attribute I want to update. In this case, online is set to false. Finally, I'll trigger the callback back to the middleware stack. Now, every time you start the server, user's online attribute will be reset to false. Okay, that was a long one. For those of you who made it through, I hope it was informative, and as always, thanks for watching.